Hi, welcome to another episode of The Art of Rope Work here at Canyons and Crags. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between equalized anchors and focused anchors, the pros and cons, and a bit about the thought process you should go through when you're deciding between the two options. So, grab your gear and a rope and follow along. There's an acronym we can use to evaluate multi-point anchors. The one I like is EARNEST, E-A-R-N-E-S-T. The E stands for equalized, A for angle, R for redundant, N-E for no extension, S for solid, and T for timely. In this video, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about each one of those components. It's enough for us to know that it's rare for us to be able to do a perfect job with every one of the items on the list. What we're gonna focus on on this video is the difference between an equalized anchor and a focused anchor. When people say equalize, what they normally are referring to is a setup something like this, where the load can move back and forth and equalize itself dynamically. When we talk about a focused anchor, we're usually doing something like putting an overhand knot right here in the webbing that isolates the two separate legs of the, of the anchor setup. I call them bunny ears for obvious reasons. So which option's better, dynamically equalized or focused? You should already know the answer is gonna start with, it depends. There's two criteria you need to uh, look at when you're making your decision. Both of them are going to require your good judgment. The first is asking yourself, do you believe that the two anchors are of equal strength? In addition, do you believe that both of the anchors are capable of holding 100% of the load that you're going to put on it? Are you using two points just because you're trying to achieve redundancy, or do you feel you absolutely need two points to distribute the load? Second thing you're going to ask yourself is whether or not the load is going to remain in one direction. This might be possible if the rope is going through another change of direction point, like in a haul system, but when you're rappelling, do you know that you're going to rappel in a straight line, or is there going to be a need to change directions part way down the wall? First, let's take a look at a dynamically equalizing anchor. Obviously, the main advantage is it equalizes itself. So regardless of the angle that our load moves, at least in theory, we're always going to be sharing the load between our anchor points. But there's some downsides. First, take a look at the way I have it rigged right now. All I've done is put the carabiner over the strand of webbing, so I have a redundancy issue. If my anchor point fails, either the webbing failing or one of the anchor points failing, there's a good chance the webbing's gonna come through the carabiner and the load is gonna drop. Load meaning a life. So now I've made a little adjustment to my setup. I put a twist in one of the strands of webbing so the carabiner is now inside of the loop that I tied with the webbing. That means that if this anchor point fails, the carabiner is going to remain inside the loop. It still doesn't address the possibility of one of these strands of webbing being cut. I don't have any redundancy there. Another thing that we're not addressing is the no extension part of Ernest. If this anchor point fails and the webbing doesn't, the carabiner is inside of the webbing, but there's going to be a drop the distance of one of these legs before the other leg can catch the load. It's no longer a static load, in my case, let's say 200 pounds. My 200 pounds dropping this two feet might become 300 pounds, 400 pounds, 500 pounds. If we were using the two anchor points because we didn't think either one of them alone was capable of holding the load, we have a problem. There is another step that we can take with an equalizing anchor to resolve at least some of the issues. What I'm going to do is set up an anchor system using limiting knots. In this case, I'm going around uh, two bolts. So what I'm going to do is go around one bolt. I'm going to pass the webbing through the second bolt. Make a good guess as to where I want this knot to end up. 
Then I'm going to come back off of one bolt over to this strand and I'm going to tie two overhand knots. For right now it doesn't really matter where I tie the two knots because I can move them later. Then I'm going back through my second bolt and connecting with my ring bend. Next thing I'm going to do is insert my carabiner again and I'm going to ask myself what range I think there's going to be with movement on this anchor. If I think that people are going to want to be moving farther this direction, I can adjust this knot just by loosening it up and moving it. So now if I think the total range of movement might be from here and it might go as far as here, I can still adjust this knot. I'll move it down just slightly. My goal is to have a minimum range here that I think is going to be needed. Now the idea behind the limiting knots is I can still equalize my anchor, but if there's a failure in one point, instead of dropping this full two feet, I'm only going to drop the distance to the knot. So greatly reducing the extension in the anchor system and reducing the dynamic load. So one of the questions I get asked quite a bit is with one of these strands, is it necessary to put a twist in it and clip the carabiner into that? The answer is no. The reason for putting that twist in is to make sure that your carabiner or rappel ring remains captured inside of the loop. In this case, that's not an issue. It will remain in the loop in between those two knots. So if I take a look at the anchor I just made using Ernest for evaluation, first question I ask myself is, is it equalized? And the answer is yes. It is dynamically equalized within this range. Do I have a good angle? Yes. Is it redundant? Yes. It's redundant if this anchor point fails. I'm still caught inside this loop. Is redundant if either one of my bunny ears is compromised. Is redundant everywhere except where this single strand is. Ideally, I'm going to rig this in a way so my rappel ring or my carabiner floats above the rock so there's no abrasion issue and redundancy becomes a non-issue. So the self-equalizing anchor with load limiting knots does have some advantages. I've shown this to a number of people who have said this is now their go-to anchor setup. And that's okay, but there's still one thing you need to keep in mind. Because it is dynamically equalizing, we are going to be sharing the load between our anchor points. If in your evaluation you decided that one of the anchor points is definitely weaker than the other, you might not want to be sharing the load equally between the two. So let's take a look at focused anchors as an alternative. What I'm going to do to make it focused is identify what the direction is that I think uh, we're going to load the anchor and I'm just going to tie an overhand knot. So now let's evaluate my focused anchor. If I use earnest and start with E for equalization, is my anchor equalized? Yes. It is statically equalized, so as long as the load is in one direction, the two anchor points are going to share the load. It is not dynamically equalized, so if there's movement from side to side, the load on each anchor point will shift back and forth. Is that a bad thing? Well, it goes back to your evaluation of the anchor points to begin with. If you felt that both anchor points were capable of holding the load by themselves and you're using two anchor points primarily for redundancy, it's not a major issue. So speaking of redundancy, this setup is redundant. If this anchor point fails or if this webbing gets cut, there's not going to be a drop at all. There's going to be a swing just so the load centers on the remaining anchor point. Another advantage I have with a focused anchor is the ability to favor one anchor point over the other. If I evaluate the two anchor points and I feel like this one is slightly weaker than the other, instead of 
bringing my focal point to the exact center, I can lean one direction to put a little more of the load on the stronger anchor point. That works because webbing stretches. So in the process of stretching, it'll get tighter on the stronger anchor point first and not quite fully tensioned on the weaker of the two anchor points. If you enjoyed this video, please take the time to give it a thumbs up and please share it on your favorite social media. Thanks for watching.